Hello everyone, welcome back to the farm. It's May 1st, 2020. Happy May Day. Um, yesterday I did a big plant haul from someone in our neighborhood from Craigslist who has a nine acre property, grows many things, has a nursery. Wanted to share with you some of the things that we, uh, we got. And we're going to do this video in two parts. First part is going to be edibles and then second part is going to be decor uh, ornamentals. That's what they call them. So let's go ahead and get started. The first plant you'll see in this pile, they look really dead, but they are not. These are all fiddlehead ferns. They look like this. These are kind of, they're normally like this, like that. These are from yesterday, so they've already lost their vigor. But people here cook with these. These are edible. People make salads with them. You can also stir fry them. And I'll show you. Just want to show you what the plant looks like. They like really shady areas. And they have this big old mass of root. And I think you can just kind of set them in a shady area and uh, cover it with some like brush and it should basically go to town. The person that I bought it from said, put them somewhere in the back where they can really spread out because you know, you're only gonna get like a little shoot per plant. And uh, so you wanna have a lot of them and they'll spread. And she, she was just pulling them out of the ground like yoink, and they would come loose. So even there's like smaller ones in here. And it sh she said it should regrow from these. I put them in water because they got a little hot in the sun yesterday. I don't know if that's a good plan. Gonna plant them later today, probably. Next plant, this is a macadamia. Macadamia nuts, you know, they grow them a lot in Hawaii, but they're not, it's like a cash crop kind of situation. I didn't know that they look like holly, but apparently they do. It's all very sharp. And she had it in this really tall pot. She said the hole for it should be at least, you know, up to here so you can get the whole thing in there. So that's macadamia. We have some decoratives around here. This one, this is mamaki. For Hawaii people, you might be familiar with it. Uh, for those of you not familiar, this is a, a native Hawaiian plant. It produces white berries that you can eat that sort of look like white raspberries. They don't really have much flavor, but hey, it's food. And the other main reason why you might have seen them is uh, because people make tea with the leaves, a really nice tea. And the main way I identify it is because it has this red stem and the veins on the leaves. It has these like dominant red veins on the leaves. Mamaki! I've tried to grow this from seed as far as I can tell. It hasn't come up. Mulberry. I didn't even know mulberries grew in Hawaii. So she did a cutting and it put out a leaf from this branch and a shoot from the bottom. She said these are giant mulberries. If you want to look at the leaf. Okay. This is a breadfruit. Another very popular thing here. We had a bunch of breadfruits, but they basically all died. They got eaten and rooted up. Breadfruit. And this is, I think she said this is an ornamental that hitched a ride in here. Jasmine. I guess that's ornamental, <laughs> but I'll show it to you anyway. Jasmine. This is pomegranate. This is another thing that I didn't know. I always assumed it would be in more dry areas, but um, I asked her and she said that she had a tree that got, that did really well and grew pomegranate, like big proper pomegranates for many years. I got three of these. As you could see, they're quite young. These are lima beans. We grow long beans, but we don't have any limas. These were only like a dollar, so I said, why not? We don't have any. This is something I'd never heard of before, even knew about. This is a root beer plant. And you can make root beer from the leaves, I guess. It's a fermentation process. 
and she crushed up one of the leaves and like I smelled it. It smelled fantastic. It had a real anise, anise smell. The leaves are very big as you can see, this one at least, compared to my hand. This is, oh, ice cream bean. This makes a really large bean pod, like maybe this big, and it has like these fuzzy white beans in it that are supposed to taste like ice cream. I don't know if they taste like ice cream, but they are good. I've had them once or twice. Ice cream bean. Next thing we have, this is a cutting that she gave me for free, and this is kava. Again, if you're, some people know about kava, it's a drink and it's a medicinal plant. You make a, a drink, I believe, from the root. It's quite popular around here and popular in many Pacific areas. Um, we have a few sproutlings of it, but apparently you can grow it from, uh, from cutting. And so what she said was, you want to have around one, two, three, four, five, approximately five nodes. Each of the nodes should put something out. She cut below the bottom one and right above the top one. And uh, she said, you know, make sure you remember which side is the bottom. And she said these can be stuck directly into, into the soil and, of course, strip the leaves from them so that it's not putting energy into, into leaf production while it's trying to root. So yeah, we have a whole bunch. We can, you know, separate this out more. She just did these for me so that I would see. So I think that's it for this area. Let's go to our next area. Okay. So this is giant lilikoi. I don't know if you're familiar with... Oh, lilikoi is what they call passion fruit around here. Um, giant, there are many varieties of passion fruit actually, and giant lilikois can get up to like this big. She pulled one off of her vines that was like this big. She said they really, you know, you can take them clippings from vines. Our neighbor gave us a, three clippings from vines. We stuck them in the ground as explained, but I think they were in too sunny of an area because they all dried up and died. So she said this one should be rooted but, you know, give it plenty more time in this pot for it to put out some new stuff. So, I'm looking forward to it. She gave me a little sample. This you might know if you've... This is Okinawa spinach. It's... Like, it's kind of purple. You want me to show them our big one? Let's do it. So we have some over here. There are two varieties. So this one is green on top and has a beautiful purple color on the bottom and the stem is purple. And there, you can eat these leaves, they're just like spinach. And we also have a variety that's green, all green, not no purple. But hey, more, I'll take more anytime. This is a Malabar chestnut, which does produce, it, it does really well around here. We already have some trees of this that are um, maybe like three, four feet. Um, people also, these little ones, they braid them and they like make bonsai. I don't know, she said you could have these. <laughs> she just gave these to me for free. I don't know, maybe they'll turn into real trees. I mean, I want to eat the chestnuts more than I want bonsai. This is an interesting one. She said she doesn't even know what it's called. She called, she tagged it survival food. If anyone knows what this is, would love to know. She said just eat the leaves. I'll take it. I like a survival food. I thought it might have been moringa at first, but I don't, I don't know. We'll see. The leaves look quite similar to Moringa. This is... She gave this to me for free. Do any of you recognize what this is? It's patchouli. The thing that incenses me. It smells absolutely fantastic. Mmm. Patchouli. And this is just in water right now. She just gave this to me. I'll plant it eventually. This is a tiny curry tree. We had, I think we had some curry trees, but they died. No, they're still there. We have them. I decided to get another one. Uh, I don't know if it's related to star fruit or bilimbi, but it's certainly, the, these leaves look quite similar. But the curry, you know, this is it. This is where curry comes from. 
This is loquat. I've had loquats before in California, but we haven't. I haven't come across them here. They're interesting. The leaves are fuzzy. If you want to see, they're really fuzzy. Loquat. This is an arabica. No, this is a redia. R H E E D I A. I'd never even heard of this. I think she said it might be. I don't. I don't want to say. I don't remember. It needs to get cleaned up though. It has some growth on these, as you can see. We'd probably want to wash it down. That's spelled R H E E D I A. Okay, this is called Brazilian plum, and I asked her, oh, is it, you know, I've heard of other things that are like something something plum. I don't really know what this is. It looks kind of, I mean, I don't know what it looks like. Brazilian plum. Maybe hog plum? I've heard of that. I don't know what Brazilian plum is. We'll see. This is another pomegranate. And she gave me this. I think this is an ornamental. She just stuck it in there. This is, I believe this is a coffee. Yeah. So we've had some success with coffee and this lady grows, I mean she said that she drinks a cup of coffee every day and she produces from her own plants. And that's kind of the dream. <laughs> So I told her our coffees haven't been doing that well. She said, oh, well, do you have Arabica? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I think we do, but I decided to get one from her anyway, because if her plants are doing well, <laughs> maybe this will be the one. What is this? This is star apple. And I believe we already have some star apple, right? But this is, look at this big friend. You want to look? Star Apple. Pretty popular around here. She had Mountain Apple as well, but we have a number of those, so I was like, no, it's okay, we don't need that. And then the last friend is another type of Lilacoy. And this is Jamaican Lilacoy, which I believe are... I've had them before. They're really good. They're different from other kinds of passion fruit. They have kind of a soft exterior that I believe is fuzzy. So she said her main, she has like major, major lilacoy to the point where she was selling five gallon buckets of them. They took over all her trees. <laughs> she like had to go up into like her canopy and chop down all these plants and they're still coming back. She had lilacoy with like base trunks like this big. And she said the main thing is that they really want to climb high. And she's like, pick a tree that you want it to go up on and then let it do that. She called it the host tree. We have ours growing along some of our fences, but they're like, you know, about here. And she said she also had them along her fences and they never produced very well and until she let them go up on the host trees to go really high up and then they produced. So this one's already quite long. Lukoi, all Lukois are vine. So we'll see what we can do. Anyway, I'll list all of these plants uh, in the description, and then I think that's it for what we got in terms of edibles from her, and I think we can probably stop it right here, and then the next video we'll do ornamentals. Thanks so much!